Hello, patchwork friends. Now, today we're going to give you a look at the side set triangle. Let's get looking. Hey, England here with you again today. And I don't know about the weather at your house, but it's pretty yucky here. Winter has arrived a tad late, but it's here. And what does one do on one of these cold, snowy days? You're looking at four of my favorite things. My rotary cutter, my stiletto, right. my side set triangle ruler, and some flavored water. <laughs> well, anyway, um, and a good friend of mine, actually, Therese gave me this glass. It's queen of everything. I'd like to think I am the queen of everything. But anyway, let's get busy looking at patchwork. Okay. Here's one of the things that I get more questions about than anything in patchwork probably is how do you handle setting a quilt on point or diagonal? So if you, instead of looking at a block square, you tilt it on point and so lengthwise of that then becomes greater and it is tricky to set it. Now, mathematically, for any of you that has a, has a PhD in math, you already know how you calculate the diagonal of a block and add to it and cut something and you get your side set triangles. But for lots of people like me, it still is a little bit daunting. One of the things that's so wonderful about the side set triangle good measure ruler from our friends at Brewer is that the ruler does all the thinking for you, as in all the other rulers in this collection. The math is in the tool, but what makes this tool so neat is I can cut all my corners and my size in one, say, with one movement, with one tool. And let's take a look at the, at the ruler now. One of the things about it, is, and it's pretty clearly marked, side set triangle, good measure, Designed by Kay England. Well, look at that. I ought to know how to use it, shouldn't I? If you look at it, when I'm talking to, uh, to someone about how to use this tool, I will typically reference, there are two sets of words here. One says block finished size, and one says cut strip width. So what your first job is, is to determine what size does your block finish. So if I said, now you know if it's an eight inch finished block, it's gonna be eight and a half laying on the table or somewhere in that ballpark. So let's look at the eight, just for grins. And I would look at that eight and then I would follow that line across and it would say, cut your strip width K six and a half. So that's what makes this so neat. Now this only works for blocks from Actually, it's three, but I say zero to 12. So if you had a 14 inch block, this is not gonna cut it. Most people won't turn those larger blocks on point because it's a little daunting for sure to cut that big square. So let's take a look at this now. So I would go to my eight, I would slide across and it would say six and a half, cut your strip width. Now this is the only ruler in the Good Measure collection that oversizes. Now all the others are spot on for what you need. This tool allows a little bit of float and or flexibility in setting that. So as we cut this, you're gonna notice that it is going to be just a skosh larger than necessary to allow you to trim in the case that your blocks, I know ideally if you had six or eight blocks, you want them all to be perfectly eight and a half. Let's say you had an eight and a quarter and an eight and uh, three eighths and an eight and a half. With some float built in, you can still successfully set a diagonal quilt and have it work because you have a little bit to play with. Let me show you how it looks when we actually cut it. Okay, today I've got these three blocks laying in front of me and it's from the Rhapsody in Red fabric collection with Wilmington Prince. And I'm just using an eight inch finished block. So they're eight and a half edge to edge. And I just kind of wanted you to see what this would look like. Now I could of course be doing a big queen size quilt with a diagonal set, but for demo purposes to be able to do a table runner is so much more efficient. And the only difference would be if you were doing a large quilt, you would just have to cut more sides and, and well, you still just have four corners, wouldn't you? Unless you did a strippy setting. So I'm gonna pull those three blocks out of the way for right now, and then I'll lay them back out after I cut. Now, in the event 
that I was going, I, I'm just kind of playing here, but if I was really seriously getting ready to set this, I would have pressed this a little bit cleaner than it's pressed, because you can see a little bit of line here. And let me address one other thing for those of you who love to press. If you've got two yards of fabric and you're getting ready to press, I never feel the need to press all the two yards. I just want to press the part I'm working with because by the time you put it back on a shelf, it's going to get wrinkled again and then you're just ironing it and creasing it and ironing and creasing it. So see, by refolding that, it's laying way flatter. As in everything to do with these rulers, Typically, I lay down the tools like I'm reading the words as if they were in a book. But remember that this ruler said you need to cut your strip K six and a half inches. So I'm going to now turn my ruler and pretend it's just a rectangle ruler. So right now, I'm getting it ready. And if you can see these lines right here, this is kind of the line I position on my fold. And then I'm going to slide over here to my six and a half. And I want to be sure I'm going to get rid of that selvage. See, right here is the exact six and a half. I'm going to first make a cut. And remember now, I'm sitting so because it's a cleaner demo that way. Now, I'm just going to simply turn that strip over, pick my tool back up, and now I'm going to slide back in. And see how neat you can see that six and a half line right here? And this is a good opportunity for me to tell you that this ruler, unlike the others, the pink and green lines don't mean the same thing because it is overcut. So as in the others where pinks are quarters and three quarters and greens are halves and holes, that rule does not apply to this tool. So I'm going to simply use my little quarter inch as my leveler. I'm going to size up here, notice where my hand is, and even sitting down, see that that's because I am sitting, I get a pretty dang clean cut. Now, if, if I was wanted a bunch of corners, let's just say I was doing a strippy and I was going to need uh, 24 sides and 8 or 12 corners, I recommend that you open these strips and cut them in a full length because otherwise you waste some of the first cut because the very first thing that I need with this tool, I need to get my selvage off, which I'm doing. And now I lay the ruler down flush on the bottom and look, it is just almost exactly like the half square triangle. And it's sitting at the eight and that's the number that my block finishes. So my block finish size is eight. I cut my strip six and a half, but it's sitting on the eight line to remind me what size my block is. I'm simply going to cut a set of corners and then I'll leave these out and I'll, I'll lay it out here in a sec. Now I turn the ruler over and now I'm going to cut a quarter square triangle. I'm looking for the eight. And because I'm sitting, I'm going to have to be a little contorted here. Well, I'm drinking lemonade. That'll help. Okay. And then I'm going to come back again. Oh, look how lucky I am. I am. Well, it's not like I had know this. I, now I have cut four sides. And look, I've got another sweet little cut right here. And I'm going to be able to get... All of my pieces for a three block table runner, if I'm using eight inch blocks out of one strip. Here's my three blocks laid out for my table runner. Now I'm going to first take the set of half squares that I cut. Now I love the fact that I have a point and a flat top. So what I like to do is lay that out so those two flat tops kiss kind of right there at the top, right there. And because it's cream on cream, this may be a little bit more difficult for you to see, but let's take a peek at what we got here. Now these are my quarter square triangles and they're going to fill in those V gaps on the side and I'm laying them in and you'll see pretty close that these are gonna be a little too large out here and that's on purpose, not a not a mistake. 
and then I'll do the same thing again. And honestly, if I were doing a strippy quilt, and I had five of these in each row, and I had three rows in my quilt, look how easy it would be for me to do that. And then here are my other two. Ooh, better move my lemonade out of the way. I didn't want to get that in trouble. Uh, there you go. Now, there she is laid out. Now, if you, if you looked at this, you'd be like, oh, how am I going to sew it? I will tell you that I, on any diagonal set, like to make my corners be the very last thing I do. So I'm going to sew this on the diagonal. So if there were 32 rows in this, in this quilt, my first one and my last one would typically only have one side set on. And if you see they're on opposite sides because that's, one, that's the first one and the last one. So I would sew this to this, these to this, this to this. Then I would sew row one to row two and row three to row one and two. Then I come back and I put my corners on like this. And then that way, by doing that, I keep it a little bit cleaner because I think it's much easier to sew this if you do that. And one of the things that I'd recommend you, you get used to is when you position this, it's going to look a little bit like this. When I'm sewing the triangle to the block, I always want to start on the inside and then let all that extra be out there because that's what we're going to trim off later. And the same thing is true when I sewed this one. I would want to sew down there, open back up, and do the same. So once you get this all sewn like this, then you get to decide how you want to border it. Now, just for grins, I put in a couple of pieces of fabric from the Rhapsody in Red collection, and I've certainly got to put a border on this. And I can decide, gee, I think I want to go to a dark one first, and then I might use my stripe. Oh, gosh, I just don't know what I'm going to do. So it's a pretty simple thing. But let me tell you why the side set triangle ruler is double value. If you were not cutting this with a ruler, what you would have to do is to determine the diagonal of your block. So that, let's just say it's a 12-inch block. The diagonal is 17 inches. You've got to add at least a couple of inches to that. So you got to cut a 19 inch square and you got to cross cut it twice. Boy, I'm telling you, that gets tough to do, even with the longest ruler you own, to not let some sway come into that. So by pre cutting these half squares and quarter square triangles, I get rid of what we call the droopy corners on most any diagonal quilt block. But when you finish it, if you see cupping in and cupping out, that is typically caused by that cut where you're trying to cut a large block in square twice. I think you would find that it really is going to, going to make your, your side set quilt so much nicer. And where I really find value in the tool is after I've used it, when I come back to clean up my block and I've got to, to true up the corners and all of that, it has such great markings that allow me to trim that up. Now I'm going to show you a quilt, the same three block table runner that's done to give you an idea of what it would look like when it's finished. And it's not the same fabrics or anything, but see, take a look at that. Now that's kind of how I want you to be thinking. Let's just say you went, I don't want three blocks. I want two. Well, geez, you can put one, two, three. I've done five block table runners and I've done two block table runners. What's so neat about this is this would give you an opportunity to use all of your other good measure rulers, make your blocks, and make these small projects because then you have gifts that are much easier to give and you're practicing your skill as you work along. Again, I'm just me and my lemonade and I just don't know how to make this any harder. I wish I really was the queen of everything. In my mind, I am, but I don't think it translates that well. So, you folks get out there and do some diagonal sets and, you know, show us those pictures. Tell us what you like. 
be sure and like the K England publication page and, and watch us on YouTube. And I don't know, who, maybe I'll get one of those planes that flies by with a streamer on the end of it telling you where to watch us. But it's, it's a long day and I've got to get some lemonade. So you folks have a great day. Come back and see us. Bye.